It was a very difficult afternoon in the courtroom, uh, primarily because uh, this was uh, so absurd, uh, because the uh, lawyers for the United States were basically relitigating uh, re the, the case from the magistrate court, cherry picking from uh, from uh, the testimonies, taking it out of context, and uh, uh, to give you the gist of it, they were spending hours and hours trying to uh, tear apart uh, the testimony, the, the chief testimony of the psychiatrist uh, who was uh, Julian's witness in, in the magistrate court, uh, attacking the integrity of uh, a distinguished professor in the United Kingdom uh, who has decades of experience. It, it was depressing. It was depressing to hear constant references to uh, uh, the, the fact that uh, Julian would not be a suicide risk because he would be able to resist the urge to commit a suicide. Again and again, all these references to that, it, it is not uh, uh, something you want to sit uh, for hours and hours and listen to. And what is uh, depressing was the fact that they were actually using Stella and the children as an argument that he would not commit suicide because they said, well, the theory is if you have a family network, you will not commit suicide. But what happens if you have that network and you are confronted with the fact that you're going to be deprived of seeing your partner and your children for the rest of your life? I have children. I can put myself in that position. You can as well. That is absurd, absurd to maintain such a thing. But we heard all of now all the very meager and empty arguments, the so-called assurances uh, by the U.S. lawyers. That was the end of it today. Tomorrow we will hear the testimony that will matter from Julian's lawyers. All the arguments that are actually are so overwhelming, overriding, uh, that it is impossible for the uh, judges in this court to uh, do anything but uphold the decision of Judge Barrater in the magistrate court. All the illegality, the CIA uh, plans to kidnap or kill Julian Assange, the key witness in the indictment that has recounted the testimony, that this legal case has no leg to stand on. And on top of that, what remains, of course, is the absurdity that a publisher and a journalist is on trial and facing 175 years in prison for doing his job, for doing his job as a journalist, exposing the truth.